If you struggle to find good things when you're out at charity shops or thrifting, then today I would love to share some of my tips for finding really good things when you're out and about. I've been thrifting charity shop shopping for years now, probably since I was a teenager, and I feel like I've got some really good tips to help you find the best stuff that you can. So I'm gonna start by taking you along with me on a day of charity shop shopping that I did recently. I started off at this very exciting charity shop department store, which I believe is the first of its kind in the UK. They took over a big unit inside a shopping center near us about half an hour away. And and lots of different charities each had a little area within a huge shop unit so it was a really great way to look at loads of stuff in one day all just in the same place and then after that I will include some footage of a trip I made to Muswell Hill which is a neighborhood quite close to where I live that has some of the best charity shops that I know in London so I'll insert some footage here of some of the things that I found that I bought and that I didn't buy and then after that I'll talk you through some of the stuff that I came away with and give you some of my best tips for charity shop shopping. I started off at the charity supermarket which is a pop-up shop in Brent Cross Shopping Centre that had lots of different stores by different charities all in one big shop unit. First up I found this amazing pair of dungarees and I will talk a little bit more about them later on because I was very excited to find these. Then I saw this Laura Rashley coat which was a little bit small for me but was really lovely sheepskin and I would definitely have bought it if it had fitted. Then a lovely pair of Ralph Lauren jeans and also this very nice pair of trousers from Cos which actually turned out to be too big but I really wish these would have fitted because they were lovely. I really like this top but it wasn't quite the right size for me, it's a tiny bit too small. And then this gorgeous vintage wool jacket was really nice but probably not quite my style so I left that one behind. This pair of trousers was from Laura Ashley and actually said UK 14 but it was vintage sizing so definitely wouldn't have fit me. I really liked this jumper, it was nice and cosy and warm but quite expensive so I left that one behind. This was a lovely dress, I think originally from Whistles. I don't actually need something like this in my wardrobe so I left that behind. This jumper I will talk about more in a minute because I did end up picking this up. I really like this whistle shirt. Again, it was slightly too small, but if it had fitted, I would definitely have taken that home. And then I really enjoyed this pair of orange cord trousers, but just didn't need them in my wardrobe. Moving on to Muswell Hill, this was a piece of wool fabric, which I very nearly picked up, but just knew I wouldn't use. This CD was off the BFG, and we've just read it with Clem, so um, I definitely picked that up. Then moving on to another shop, so this was North London Hospice, one of my favourite charity shops to visit in Muswell Hill. I found this jumpsuit from Whistles, which actually was so beautiful, but again, just a little bit too small. Someone will really enjoy that one, I think. This is all Doll's House furniture. Again, I'll talk about that some more later on. The window displays in some of these shops are really gorgeous. This lovely wool jumper I nearly picked up as well. I kind of wish I had, actually. It's a bit of a shame. So the first thing that I found at the charity shop department store, which was actually called Charity Supermarket, which is a really fun name. Uh, the first thing I found was this pink shirt, which is something that I will definitely wear a lot. This is just a fast fashion brand. I believe it's misguided, so um, nothing special, but it's nice cotton and it feels quite heavy and I love the colour. This colour I wear a lot, so I was really happy with that. That was five pounds, so quite a good price. The thing I will say about this charity shop department store is that it was a little bit on the expensive side. I think that because it was a pop-up limited edition and had quite a lot of fanfare around it that they'd obviously put the prices up a little bit more than you might find in a local charity shop. But the payoff was that there was obviously a lot of stuff all in one place. So 
potentially paying a little bit more for the convenience of having everything all together. The next thing I got was this jumper by Monkey. So again, a fast fashion brand and it's not wool, it's just acrylic, but I thought it was really pretty and it reminds me a lot of Cezanne, which is a lovely French brand. Again, it's this color pink, which I wear loads of, so I really like that. And I think it will be really great for spring, which is hopefully just around the corner. Then I found these dungarees, which hopefully I will put a cutaway of them full length so that you can see exactly what they look like. These would have been over a hundred pounds new and were only 25 and they fit me perfectly. So I was really, really pleased to find these. I think I will get lots of wear out of them because I find dungarees so practical and very flattering. Um, so yeah, that was a very exciting find for me. <laughs> then I headed on to Muswell Hill and I found a couple of pairs of trousers for my son, Clem, but he has since worn them and they're dirty. <laughs> so I won't be able to show you them, but they were just a very simple uh, cord trousers which will just do him for running around in the garden and playing so nothing special but then I did find three very exciting toys which I'm going to show you now so first off I found this lovely jigsaw by the Spanish brand Longi I think it's pronounced Longi these jigsaw puzzles are usually sell for like 20 pounds new and it was only two pounds 25 so um an absolute bargain we have since uh, completed the jigsaw and there are two pieces missing <laughs> so that's probably why it was so cheap but I've sent a message to the brand on Instagram and I'm hoping that they'll be able to send us the replacement pieces so that we can do this puzzle and actually complete it. Next up, hopefully it's not too loud, is this huge box of kind of nuts and bolts and screws all wooden um, that my son my five-year-old will absolutely love and already has played with and does love um, he's a massive fan of like building and definitely of screwing and kind of doing diy and tinkering like his dad does quite a bit of so i was really excited to find this and it's definitely been something that he's loved i think it was quite a lot it was about 10 pounds for all of it um, and there's a few different kinds of screws that obviously were from different kits that have been put together. So a little more on the expensive side, but there's quite a lot here. Um, so that was an exciting find. And then I think my most favourite find of all were these little pieces of doll's house furniture. This isn't even all of it. I There was loads of it. And um, so I picked my favourite pieces and there, there's even more than I can hold in my hand. So I'll, again, I'll put a cutaway in. Um, it's really good quality wooden furniture. I love the style of it, like really simple and a little bit vintage. Um, and each piece was about three pounds. So I think I got about maybe four or five things um, to put in Margot's doll's house. I'm actually in the process of completely redoing the doll's house. So it looks a little bit of a mess now, but over the year, I'm hoping that I will gradually collect more and more little pieces and at the end of the year at Christmas, kind of re-gift it to her with everything done and beautiful. <laughs> now, as I promised at the start of the video, I would love to share some of my tips for finding really good stuff in charity shops. And the first tip is to make sure you go to lots of places. So if you are looking for a charity shop area to go to, I would look for somewhere that has lots of charity shops in a small space. So the ones that I visited in Muswell Hill are all very close together. There's maybe like six or seven within a hundred meter stretch, which means that you can cover lots of space in a small amount of time. Obviously the charity shop supermarket was like the ideal place to do that. I actually found it slightly overwhelming because there was so much stuff. And if you think about a normal shop, there's kind of 10 of each item. So filling a whole big shop is quite easy and you can cover it quite quickly because you're not looking at absolutely every item in the store. But me and my friend actually found like it took us ages to get through everything in that huge department store. So you need lots of time, definitely. But if you're up for it and it's kind of something that you enjoy doing, then I would definitely recommend looking at as much as you can manage. The second thing I would recommend is to go to areas where people are quite well off. Obviously, this means that they have more disposable income. They're likely to buy and then give away slightly better brands or clothes that are in better condition. And often I find it means you, you find real gems from brands that are slightly more high end than perhaps in other areas. So Muswell Hill that I visited earlier this week, 
is one of the most well-off areas in North London, so it's bound to have quite a bit of good stuff knocking about in the charity shops. So that's why it's one of my favourite places to go. My third and probably my best tip is to make sure that you go to charity shops that are local to the area only. So if you think about Cancer Research UK, they have charity shops all over the country. They're a huge charity, wonderful charity, but there are charity shops everywhere. And because of that, they have quite a centralised pricing system and they know a lot about pricing clothes and will often funnel things about to get the best things into the best areas. Local charity shops don't do that so much. So whether it's just a one-off single charity shop for a very small local charity or even like a local branch. So here in North London, we have the North London Hospice charity shops. I think there's like maybe four or five, at least that I know of. And I find the pricing in those shops is much better. It's lower and there is also generally speaking a wider range of stuff available they tend to be a little bit less organized so they might be a bit more messy and you'll have to really rifle through stuff but the time that you invest in that will pay off because often you find stuff that is quite a bit cheaper and really nice Another tip I have is to always check the label of your clothing. So it could be that you think you've got a really good bargain and then you check the label and you realise that this piece of clothing that looks beautiful is actually made from something really cheap like polyester. Now I'm not saying that you should absolutely never buy polyester clothing, but I think it's really important to check what it is that you're buying and to know that what you're buying is actually going to be good quality and last a little while. Even if you're shopping in charity shops, it's still worth buying buying intentionally, buying things that you know that you'll love for a really long time and that won't just end up back in a charity shop in a few months time. The same goes for toys and homeware and things like that. So with my jigsaw puzzle, which was missing pieces, obviously in an ideal world, I would have checked that all the pieces were there. It's a little bit difficult to do that in a hurry. I had my youngest with me, so I was kind of trying to go quickly, but yeah, if you can, it's worth checking things over and making sure that you're still making an intentional purchase and not just buying something because it looks good. If you'd like to come thrifting with me again, then you will almost certainly love this video where I visited some of the best charity shops in the world, in my opinion, on the island of Jersey where my husband is from. I will leave a link to that here. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.